Welcome back friends to the shop of part three of the video series where we're trying to build a 100% USA made mechanics tool kit that's snap on quality for under $1,000. In today's video, we're gonna be covering my choice for side cutters, one of the most essential tools that a guy can have in his toolbox. Very, very difficult to find a good quality USA made option. There are not many of them left out there but I think I've got something that's gonna fill the bill very nicely. The side cutter, one of the tools that bridges almost every trade, carpenter, welder, mechanic, machinist, an essential tool, and if you buy the right one, you'll only have to buy it once. If you've had bad luck with these or found them to be not very effective, it's probably because you've been using cheap ones because if you get a good pair, they are effective. And for me, what the gold standard is, it needs to be able to do two things needs to be able to cut through a piece of paper, and it needs to be able to cut through a hard old galvanized nail. Goodness, is there anything harder than a nail? And with one hand. And you'll be surprised how difficult that is, and not all of them will do that. Now, of course, these are, these are my personal one here, the Snap-on, the 87 ACF. I mean, of course, the gold standard of uh, side cutters. Man, oh man, these are <laughs> beautiful. Actually, these are recently replaced by my old snap-on ones that I had for over 20 years, which were actually identical to the Williams model right there. So when I traded these in, they actually gave me the new updated version, and these are, well, I mean, the, things, the thing speaks for itself, doesn't it? They are uh, an extraordinary tool, but at a great cost. Can we find something that, is, as, that performs as well as these for a less, le less money? Uh, so these are gonna come in at at $70. Now, if you go on the site, you'll see that it's 50 something, but by the time you pay shipping to you, it's gonna be $70 for these cutters. And even at that, after using them and having them, yes, it is well worth it. Now, as we know, the Williams brand, and, and I'm sorry I ordered the wrong ones. You'll notice that these are a little bit small. These are the fives. I wanted to get the six, I, I clicked the wrong box. So you just have to use the imagination station and imagine that these are um, you know, the same length. They're going to be more robust and bigger. I'm going to return these um, for that very reason. And then, of course, we have, man, is there anything more American and iconic to Klein? I don't think, I mean, you're going to, when you mention Klein, I mean, Klein is so famous and so popular for their tools that you refer to them, hand me a pair of Kleins, especially with our lineman friends. And you'll even see on there that it has the Klein logo of, the, of a guy climbing a power pole and of course, USA made still and excellent quality. I, there's such a passionate following for Klein tools that you, you know you have a special tool when you're at a garage sale. You know, when you're at a garage sale, there's always bins and tools, and I'm always digging through there. Anytime I see something with Klein on it, I snatch it up. I mean, it's, it's just a treasure. And they've been making them from what, since I wrote, I did a little stuff, 1857. I actually looked into the history you want a little history of the Klein Tool Company? It's fascinating. 1857, Matthias Klein came from Germany. He was a classically trained blacksmith. He was actually a locksmith. So he made locks and door hinges, door handles, that sort of thing. Spent a year on a whaler, building uh, ore locks and sharpening harpoons and stuff and landed in Chicago. Well, he started a small blacksmith shop and he was doing you know, this and that. Now this is before production and, and you know, everything was still handmade at the time. Well, the telegraph lines were starting to come in. That was a new thing. And one of the first, one of the linemen came into him and he had a pair of lineman tools that were made in Germany. That was the only place you could get them at the time. It was a pair of line pliers and he'd broken one side of them. Well, he asked Matthias if he could repair that side. And Matthias said that he could and he left him with him. And so Matthias made a replacement side to match the existing one. Well, the lineman came back some weeks later and he had broken the other side and Matthias had made, fashioned a second side, and that was the first Klein pliers. Well, word got out that he was able to produce such a great, high-quality, innovative tool that was perfect for the linemen, and that's where the company started. Fun fact, back in the day, in 1904, if you were a lineman, you were to buy a pair of Klein handmade lineman pliers, it would have cost you $3.60. And if you want them nickel coated, it was an extra 30 cents. <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. So how's that translate to today? Well, I did the math and back then a guy would have made about $1.75 an hour. So after, after taxes, 
a guy would have to work over two days to pay for a pair of clients. You know, that was probably one of his primary tools. You know, it's kind of interesting because you think as a tradesman, you know, if you were going to buy like a professional grade tool, equivalent of this for your trade, let's say, let's say a Hilti or a cordless drill. It's not too far from the fact, is it? I mean, three hundred, you know, two and a half days wages. What's that? You know, you, that's what it would cost to buy yourself a, a, a nice Hilti. So you know, things are are different, but things are kind of the same. I, I thought that was kind of fun, and they did a contest the other or uh, a while back years ago. Who could find the oldest pair of clients, and they offered a five thousand dollar reward, and a bunch of guys submitted. Uh, their pliers, and apparently on the inside of the handle, they date everything. So you can date them uh, back to basically when they were manufactured. And the oldest pair was, I think, was like 1904. Yeah, 1904 was the oldest pair of Kleins, and he got the first place prize. But still functioning just like they were. I mean, it's iconic. It tr it tr truly, truly is an, an amazing tool, and still made in the USA, and at a great price. You know what a pair of Kleins cost you right now? I paid $28 for these. This is the D228-8. This is the one you want, the, the diagonal cutter. Um, extraordinary pliers. I'm going to throw these in just as a reference. These are my personal ones that I you know, carry in my construction box. Uh, you know, the, these are the channel locks. You know, of course, channel locks are still a good USA-made company. But I'm not going to put these in the mix because I never have liked these. And nothing against channel lock. It's just the, I don't know what it is. The, the fulcrum point is wrong. Uh, the the handle closes uh, too close. They just they're not great cutters. Let me show you a perfect example. Now a side cutter you should be able to as I said cut a hard old nail with one hand. I've never been able to do that with these. Try as I might and I granted that they're old and rusty but even when they were new I just can't get it done and I, they're fine uh, but I'm not going to include them. I, I never have liked them because we have the because the Williams are out of the we got the wrong size. I'm going to return these. I'm not going to damage them and cut them up. And after, actually, after looking at them and the fit and finish, to be honest with you, um, I, I'm not going to recommend these. Now, there is one, one thing a guy might want to consider. One thing that is not great about the clients, and you know, these are spe kind of specifically built for linemen in that trade, and, I, and I'm not poking fun at them, or mechanics tools, or I'm not discounting them, or mechanics tools need sometimes to work in tighter places, need to get in, you know, how cars are and snip wires and such. These are a little bit fat. Another gripe of the channel locks, the fat where they won't fit in every place. They're not quite as nimble and as small as maybe the Williams, but, uh, you know, I don't know. Price-wise, you know, we're looking at the same thing. So the Williams came in $24, the clients are $28, the snap-on $70. I'm going to go with the clients just because they're so iconic and once you have them uh, you will treasure them this is something that will still be going in a hundred years let's try it out but these are brand new never been used i bought them last night at home depot and as i said you should be able to cut a piece of paper cleanly yep which it, which it does right there snap-ons these are relatively new I've, I've used them for a few months but not not hard but Snap on should be the same thing right there. Yeah. No, not quite. No, didn't quite cut it right there. But again, they are used, so know that. But there's no question that these are excellent pliers. Yeah, well, yeah. speaks for itself right there. You know, I can't, uh, proof is in the eating of the pudding. But I just thought I'd put those there for you to see it, so you could see it. Now, the nail, of course, these are excellent in that it's just the, 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 the spacing of the handle, yeah, no, no problem. It, it, it seems to just work in the, in the strongest stroke or the strongest part of your hand where some of them are too big, some of them are too small. You just, I don't know, they just got it right. They just got it right. And look at the build. I mean, really, I mean, not that, might be overbuilt. When I first saw them, I actually thought, ah, those are a little bit chunkier than they probably need to be, but yeah, hard to complain about that. Of course, the Kleins, um, smoother than the Snap-ons. The Snap-ons are super stiff. Easily, you know, easily cut through one hand. Actually easier. They actually cut better than the Snap-ons on that particular nail. So this is going to be, uh, this is going to be my recommendation right here. Uh, they are just fabulous tools. Great company, great history, and 
yeah, it's one of those things like, you know, pass me a Kleenex. You know, lots of companies make Kleenexes, but there really is only one, you know, the original. Hand me a pair of Kleins. Um, universally recognized. Everyone loves them. Say, is that chip? <laughs> it's like, no, there's just some galvanized galvanize on there. Uh, at $28, how could you compete with it? It cut the paper, the snap on didn't. It cut the nail actually easier than the snap on, um, but I mean, both are good. Both are good, but you would could not go wrong with that. So this is going to be my recommendation for the side cutters. In parts one and two, we covered USA screwdrivers and the excellent Williams flex head ratchet. Now these, of course, are made by Williams, which is a subsidiary of Snap-on, and the quality is there. Our total price was $135, and that was with the magnetic mount. I'm not going to be including the mounts in the future for the price. I will give you suggestions and what I would recommend and give you links, but we're not going to include that in the price. It's too personal and I can't account for every variation. So that's going to bring our price down to 109 where it stands. 109 is where we're starting today. Let's tally up where we are so far at the end of part three. We're at our $61 for our drivers, our 48 for our ratchet, 28 for our clients. That brings us to a grand total of $137. Thank you for watching these videos, friends. I really appreciate it. If you would take a moment, if you like them, click the thumbs up. If you don't, click the thumbs down. I will be putting affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links, to the Klein tools down the pliers on there. Uh, this helps offset the cost. I am paying for all of these with my own money. There's no sponsorship. I'm not receiving free tools from anything, anyone. Um, this is not the, the end all be all. This is just, um, just my opinion, my biased opinion. So take it for, for what it's worth. But I think if you have, I, I don't think, I know. Sometimes with tools, there's more than just the price. It, there's just something about them that speak to you. And that's largely been lost with the things that we buy today. You know, being someone that, is, that has been, I've been fortunate enough to work with quality tools and, and my dabbling with traditional woodworking and, and having handmade tools in, in your hands and working with them, tools that belong to my dad and grandfather. I know it's cheesy and, I, I, and maybe people don't understand it and I'm not going to go so far as to say they have a soul, but there's something about it. it in, the excellence you have in the selection of your tools and the taking the care of them, that excellence goes into your work. It manifests into the quality of work that you do. I don't know why. I can't explain it. it. It just does. And you can tell a lot about a guy from his tools. You can tell a lot about a guy that shows up on a job site from the condition of his truck. Just look on his dash. Is it neat and organized? It doesn't have to be new. It doesn't even have to be clean. I understand that you don't have time to clean your truck all the day if, if you're out making money and making a living for your family. But if it's if it's six inches of McDonald's wrappers and cigarette cartons all over the place, well, you kind of know your guy, right? So a lot of that, just that, that excellence, the excellence of the quality, it translates into your work. I, I don't know why. I can't explain it. It's just, it's one of those things. Um, and once you start working with it, you'll, you'll see it. And it doesn't hurt your character either. I mean, it, it, it is, um, it's, a, it's a way of living. It's a way of looking at the world um, and that it will, it, will, it will change your life. It, it, it really will. And this is an investment that is just deeper than just face value. And I have that in mind, you know, when I'm making these selections. Yeah, we could, we could pick the channel locks. And, and the channel locks are a good tool. It's not just about price, but they don't do it for me. I mean, I had, I've had them in my toolbox for 20 years. I use them. They're there. But they're all, you see, they're all beat up and rusty. They're not taken care of because I don't respect them because they just haven't, they haven't proved, proven to me to be of excellence um, like some of the other ones do. Next week, next week, like we're doing a weekly series, next video uh, we're going to be covering sockets. I'm going to be sticking, I'm going to recommend you start with a 3 8 drive set and deep and shallow. And this is new for me. I've never had a set of 3 8 impacts. And we're going to be doing both. I'm, I'm go, I'm, okay, I get it, yeah. We shouldn't be using the chrome sockets on the impact drivers. And now that we have the excellent cordless impact wrenches that are within reach for most guys, and most, most of you probably already have them, at least the cordless drive ones, then we need to get about being using the right tool for the right job. So we'll be doing a full set of metric and standard, a deep and shallow 
of uh, snap-on quality, I guarantee it, for a fraction of the price. So look forward to that, uh, and please don't miss it. Um, it's going to be a good one. Goodness. Thank you for watching. Please keep us in your prayers. We pray for you constantly. We're grateful for this opportunity to be able to be here, um, for you guys supporting us, and that's about enough. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. We'll see you guys on the next video.